Here's a captivating problem that will take us on an elegant journey through number theory. We need to find all positive integers and such that n divides 2 to the power n plus 1. This innocent-looking equation hides a beautiful and surprising structure. In number theory, we always begin with concrete examples. Let's test the first few values and see what patterns emerge from the data. For n equals 1, 1 divides 3. This works perfectly, so n equals 1 is our first solution. For n equals 2, 2 does not divide 5 since 5 is odd, so n equals 2 fails. For n equals 3, 3 divides 9 perfectly, so n equals 3 is another solution. For n equals 4, 4 does not divide 17, another failure. Jumping to n equals 9, 9 must divide 2 to the 9th plus 1, which is 513. And this is true. 9 divides 513 exactly 57 times. This leads us to a striking conjecture. The solutions are exactly the non-negative powers of 3. Now we need to prove our conjecture. We'll use proof by contradiction combined with a clever analysis of prime factors. This approach will reveal the deep structure behind the problem. We'll assume for contradiction that there exists a solution and greater than one that is not a power of three. Our goal is to show this leads to an impossibility. First, observe that two to any power is even, so two to the n plus one is always odd. Therefore, any divisor n greater than one must itself be odd. Here's our key insight. Let p be the smallest prime factor of n. This single choice will drive our entire argument. Now we'll use the power of modular arithmetic to extract crucial information from our divisibility condition. We know that p divides n and n divides 2 to the n plus 1. By transitivity of divisibility, p must divide 2 to the n plus 1. This translates to a powerful congruence. 2 to the n is congruent to negative 1 modulo p. This single equation will unlock everything. If we square both sides, we get 2 to the 2n is congruent to 1 modulo p. This gives us a clean power identity that will be crucial for our next step. Now we'll deploy one of the most powerful tools in number theory, multiplicative order. This will give us precise control over the behavior of powers. Let d be the multiplicative order of 2 modulo p. This is the smallest positive integer such that 2 to the d is congruent to 1 modulo p. From our earlier result, since 2 to the 2n is congruent to 1, the order d must divide 2n. However, since 2 to the n is congruent to negative 1, it's definitely not congruent to 1. Let's prove this rigorously. If d were to divide n, then n would be some multiple of d. Then 2 to the n would be 2 to the dk which equals 2 to the d raised to the k power. Since 2 to the d is congruent to 1, this would be congruent to 1 modulo p. This would mean 1 is congruent to negative 1, which implies p divides 2. But p must be an odd prime. This contradiction proves d cannot divide n. Therefore, d cannot divide n. We have a delicate situation. d divides 2n but not n. Now we invoke Fermat's little theorem. Since p is prime and doesn't divide 2, the order d must divide p minus 1. We now have three crucial facts about d. By combining them cleverly, we'll create an inescapable contradiction that reveals the true nature of the problem. Let's organize our knowledge. d divides p minus 1, d divides 2n, but d does not divide n. The first two conditions tell us that d must divide their greatest common divisor. Therefore, d divides the greatest common divisor of p minus 1 and 2n. Here's why. Any prime factor of p minus 1 must be strictly smaller than p itself. But p is the smallest prime factor of n, so no prime smaller than p can divide n. 
This forces a remarkable conclusion. N and P minus 1 share no common prime factors. They are coprime. Here we use a key property of the greatest common divisor. Since N and P minus 1 are coprime, the only factor that 2N can contribute to the GCD with P minus 1 is the factor of 2 itself. Since P is odd, P minus 1 is even, so the greatest common divisor of P minus 1 and 2 is exactly 2. Putting it all together, D must divide 2, so D can only be 1 or 2. But we already established that D cannot be 1, because 2 to the N is not congruent to 1 modulo P. Therefore, D must equal exactly 2. Now we'll see what happens when the multiplicative order of 2 modulo P is exactly 2. This will lead us to an inevitable and beautiful conclusion. If the order of 2 modulo P is 2, then 2 squared must be congruent to 1 modulo P. This simplifies to 4 is congruent to 1 modulo P. This means P must divide 3. Therefore, P equals 3. That's an excellent question. But no, if n were 15, we could apply our entire argument to the number n divided by 3, which is 5. The smallest prime factor of that number would be 5, but our logic would force it to be 3. The argument holds for any part of n that is not a power of 3. This leads to our final conclusion. Let's resolve this contradiction and verify our result with a concrete example to build confidence in our abstract proof. The only way to resolve our contradiction is to reject our assumption. Therefore, every solution and greater than 1 must indeed be a power of 3. Including our initial solution n equals 1, the complete answer is n equals 3 to the k for all non-negative integers, k. Let's verify with a concrete example. Does 27 divide 2 to the 27th power plus 1? Indeed, 2 to the 27th plus 1 equals 134,217,729, which factors as 27 times 4,970,657. Let's present our beautiful final result in all its glory. The explicit solutions are 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, 243, and so on. Our final answer, n equals 3 to the k for all non-negative integers. What started as a simple divisibility question revealed a profound mathematical structure. The interplay between modular arithmetic, multiplicative order, and prime factorization created an elegant proof that the only solutions are powers of 3. Thank you for joining me on this mathematical journey. If you enjoyed exploring the hidden beauty in this Olympiad problem, please like this video and subscribe for more elegant proofs and surprising mathematical discoveries.